Hello, everyone, and welcome to our third quarter housing outlook. Today's focus is on Southern California. I'm Allie Wolf, the Chief Economist with Zonda, and I'm pleased to be joined today by Alexis Wilmot, Zonda's Senior Manager of Advisory and Southern California expert. As mentioned, we are with Zonda, a housing data and consultancy firm. We track the entire building life cycle from raw land up to the closing out of new home communities. You can access our data on the housing market at the national level, all the way down to community by community stats through enterprise. Our latest update includes up to 10 years of subdivision history, as well as more details on school districts. We take our proprietary data and layer in other market health indicators to deliver our clients market snapshots for nearly 70 metros across the country. You can get your free local report today by scanning the QR code or visiting zondahome.com backslash market hyphen snapshot. Beyond data, our team provides analysis. We provide custom analysis through our advisory team led by Tim Sullivan, where we do work on lot and product segmentation, pricing and absorption, as well as consumer and product research. We also have published research reports on the building product space brought to you by Todd Tamalak, build to rent market led by Sean Fergus and Kimberly Byram, and national and metro level comparisons through our national outlook provided by me and the economics department. Newhomesource.com is our way to connect directly with consumers. New Home Source is the largest new home listing platform in the U.S., allowing builders to reach and engage with consumers and close more homes. Amplify your reach to qualified new home shoppers by listing your communities with us today. Finally, times are changing in the rental market. You will not want to miss Zonda's two and a half day conference, MFE, in Las Vegas talking about the evolving rental market and where it is headed. Today's program is sponsored by two companies. The first is Sonova. Sonova is an energy services company with a specialized team dedicated to the home building sector. For more than a decade, Sonova has worked with over 70 home builders across the nation, offering solar, energy management, battery storage, and electric vehicle charging solutions. With their energy service offerings, Sonova is disrupting the traditional energy landscape and the way the 21st century consumer generates and consumes electricity. To learn more about their offerings, including no upfront cost leases, power purchase agreements, and purchase programs, visit www.buildwithsonova.com. Our second sponsor is Westwood Insurance Agency. Westwood Insurance Agency was founded by a home builder in 1952 and provides home insurance built for today's housing market. For more than 70 years, Westwood Insurance Agency has helped builders close on time and improve the home buying experience for their customers using an embedded insurance model. They work with 14 of the top 20 builders on the Builder 100 list, and the coverage is available in all 50 states with insurance options even in the toughest markets. For more information, visit westwoodinsurance.com backslash partners. A big thank you to both Sonova and Westwood Insurance Agency for sponsoring today's webinar. With that, it's time to dive into content. I'm gonna start with a 15 minute high level discussion looking at national and Southern California trends before I pass to Alexis to do a deep dive on top SoCal markets. Now where I wanna start is where I often do, looking at the existing home market. It still represents the largest share of total transactions, but if you look at sales, there really hasn't been a change compared to where we were last year, and at this point, almost compared to where we were two years ago. 
The big change that we are seeing on the existing home front, though, comes from inventory. This is showing you active listings nationally by month, by year. So far in 2024, active listings have come in January through May at the highest level since 2020. The May level of listings are up 35% compared to where we were last year. I want you to remember this 35% increase as we go to the next slide, but also know that context is still important. Yes, there has been a lift on the national level, but where this leaves us is still down 33% compared to 2019. So again, we said up 35% year over year. This map is showing you how that percentage change varies by market. The more purple the dot, the higher the year over year change. You can see a concentration of purple dots in parts of Florida, Texas, Arizona, Colorado. We like this map because it shows you which markets should be flagged, which markets should be watched because there has been this dramatic increase. If you focus specifically on Southern California, you can see LA and Orange County and Riverside San Bernardino growing right in line with that national level. San Diego outpacing that growth up 65%. But like we just talked about, you can look at the year-over-year -year change, but then you need to say, okay, how does this look relative to history? Going back to 2019, you can see that while San Diego listings have risen 65% year-over-year, they're still down 50% compared to 2019. In fact, if you look at Southern California as a whole, you also see it in Northern California, but there's this very big drop compared to where we were. These markets are nowhere near returning back to 2019, when even then we said inventory levels were so tight. If you think about Southern California, there's some unique things that are playing into the market. One is there's a very high percent of homeowners that have not moved in over 20 years, and that distribution skews towards the older population, people that already own homes in California and are not moving. Part of that can be tied to Prop 13. If you're not familiar with that, it is a uh, legislation that prevents property taxes from rising too much on a year-to-year -year basis. We know in some cases in Southern California, you have people that have locked in a low rate and they know that there's lots of geographic barriers to getting more homes built in Southern California and they wanna hold that existing home as a rental. We'll talk later about prices across the country, but one thing we know is that if someone is going to reset in mortgage interest rate and move from 3% to 7%, for example, that's going to have a more shocking impact, a more outsized impact on the monthly payment in higher cost areas like Southern California versus some lower cost areas in the country. And then a big part of the story that you'll see both in my section and from Alexis later is there's just been this consistent supply not keeping pace with demand, very limited new home options playing into this discussion as well. If you step back and look for those more purple dots again, you'll see parts of Florida, parts of Texas, Arizona, Colorado. There are areas across the country today where inventory is higher than where it was in 2019. So we're coming back to a housing market where it's very difficult to make a blanket statement or talk about a national trend because it does vary so much by location. But when you look at resale inventory, you need to complete the picture by also looking at new home supply. What we like to look at is community count. Anywhere where there are five or more units for sale, nationally community count levels are down 25% compared to 2019. Now there are some areas across the country where community count levels are at 2019, if not above 2019 levels, but Southern California is not one of those. You can see Riverside San Bernardino, that's the blue line. That's a more inland, more affordable part of Southern California. We're getting closer to where we were in 2019 with overall community count, but still down 15%. In places like Los Angeles, Orange County, and San Diego, we're talking a 50 to 60% drop in overall community count. 
And if you look at that purple line for Los Angeles, it's even trending down. We're not even seeing that level start to trend up. That's such a big part of the backdrop is not only that it's been difficult to get new homes built in California, but also to look at the path of these markets. Now, what I'm gonna show you is the rank of these three metros in terms of housing starts. So the way you should look at this is in 2014, LA Orange County was the 11th largest production market in the country for new homes. That dropped down in 2016, or went up, where LAOC was now the ninth largest production market in the country. You track this out every two years over the past 10 years, and what you can find mirrors what we had seen with Community Count. So now LA Orange County is the 26th largest production market in the country. San Diego has moved from 36th down to 40th, but Riverside has gained this share. So Riverside, San Bernardino, now the ninth largest production market. If you step back, though, you say, how can you start homes? Well, you need to have the land and lot supply to be able to backfill that. Again, Alexis will talk more about this in her section. But when we look at our lot supply index, we know that three of the five tightest markets in the nation for lot supply are in Southern California, all three of the markets that we've talked about here. And with that, the lack of supply on the resale side, the lack of supply on the new home side, still seeing an interest in people wanting to buy homes locally, we know that that has led to not only high prices, but also growing prices. This is showing you the distribution or really the, the median closing price across the nation. We had talked about the lock-in effect. So look at LAOC. We have the median closing price of a million. Moving from 3% to 7% on the interest rate is going to have a much greater impact than, say, a market like Raleigh, where the new home closing price is in the 400,000s. So we know the big issue in the market, besides not being able to build more homes, is really because we can't build more homes, we're still seeing these high levels of home prices. If you roll it all together, though, we then want to see how the new home market is performing locally. This is showing you the ZMR, the Zonda market ranking. This looks at sales adjusted for supply, sales adjusted for seasonality. And if you look at Southern California, you can say all things considered, we do find that the market is hitting between average and slightly overperforming sales activity today. That is in line with what we see nationally with a slightly overperforming market. But if you're not a subscriber to the National Outlook, you may not see how this has shifted. When we saw the data in April, what we found is 70% of the top markets were overperforming. In May, that dropped down to about 50%. And that's what we capture, not only in our data, but also from the Builder Sentiment Survey. We run this survey mid-month every month, and we like to get a sense of how builders are feeling. So we said that nationally, we're still slightly overperforming, but there's been a downshift. You can see the purple bars here is where we are so far or where we were so far in June. We had the majority of builders that were saying demand is slower than expected, but not worrisome. What that captures to us is seasonality. Seasonality is kicking back in. And we saw that in the responses in our survey. Selling season is coming to an end, seasonality reverting back to what it normally feels like. There were certainly comments from builders that said there's just no urgency out there. There's this general feeling from consumers that now is not the right time to buy. And when you look at the ZMR, the map we had just looked at, we don't care how the homes are sold. We just care that they are. And from our survey, we had builders say, yeah, maybe we're hitting a reasonable sales level, but it's taking a lot more marketing of our incentives. It's taking a higher dollar amount to get a consumer over the fence. For the most part, in our builder survey for June, the sentiment was the market shifted, the market slower, but there weren't that many builders that were very worried about where the market is. There were some builders though, that said traffic is down to uncomfortable levels. There were some comments saying that the market has completely frozen. 
And so what we wanted to do is say, okay, why are we seeing that some of these comments are really nervous and some of these comments just feel like the market's shifting? Well, the answer is, and it goes back to what we've talked about, is it depends on the area. So the yellow bars for the US are showing us the current state of the market that we had just seen on the last slide. Then you can see California. We have almost 90% of the respondents saying that demand is slower than expected, but not worrisome. So seeing just kind of standard seasonality showing up in the market. Where you see some of the more alarmed comments, uh, we see that concentrated in parts of Florida and Texas. Again, we just wrote a report on this in our national outlook, highlighting some of the markets of concern. But when we look at the responses in June, we have 70% of the builders in Florida telling us that demand is slower than expected and causing concern. But since this focus today is on Southern California, I want to then look at the weekly data that we have. Now, many of you know we have, and we track the entire building life cycle. We have our Zonda database. We like the builder survey to ask qualitative questions, but in some areas across the country, we also have weekly data through our sales and traffic reports. So this is showing you net contracts through the most recent week. Top chart is for Southern California, think LAOC, bottom chart for San Diego. In the top chart, you're trying to find the red line, that's current. In the bottom chart, you're looking for the blue line, that's current. And I think really the most simple way to describe it is June in Southern California is not the best month of the year that we've seen as we go back over the past handful of years. It's also not the worst June that we've seen as we look over the past few years. And I think part of this ties back to that extra layer. When we have reasonably steady sales, and obviously it's faltering a bit because of affordability and seasonality, we then want to track out cancellations. Are we seeing anything particularly alarming from cancellation data? When you look at SoCal and San Diego, again, look for the red and the top, look for the blue in the bottom. The answer is no. When we look at cancellations, at least where we are today, still holding at very healthy levels. So we take all of this now into consideration. The market that feels like it's shifting a bit, the changes on the resale supply. We always like to ask builders about how this then plays into what they think they'll do with housing starts. Through mid-June, we still had 72% of builders nationally that plan to start more homes this year versus last year. Admittedly, the sample size for Southern California is reasonably small, but all of the builders that we talked to in Southern California also said that they anticipate increasing housing starts this year over last year. We added an extra question in our June survey, start to think about 2025. And again, nationally and in Southern California, we have builders saying that they're planning to increase housing starts in 2025 over the levels that we achieve here in 2024. When we dig into the why, part of it comes from lot supply. In many markets, we are up from the absolute bottom of lot supply. Very few areas do we feel that we're flush with lot inventory, but a little bit more developable land supports a little bit more housing construction. It's not only that, but it's also the anticipation of lower interest rates. Now, I will be the first person to tell you I hate presenting on mortgage rate forecasts. It's very easy to call this wrong. There are so many moving parts, but I know how important this is in being able to forecast the future. So here, what you're seeing are the forecasts of six top firms, including Zonda, for the mortgage rate forecast through the end of this year and through the end of next year. And what you can see is that the general consensus is that mortgage rates are more likely to be down than up. Through the end of this year, consensus is between 6.5 and 7%. Through the end of next year, consensus is between 5.9 and 6.6%. Notice that none of these top forecasting firms, including us, think that rates will be back to 3 or 4% anytime soon. If you roll all of this together and tie it back to Southern California markets, obviously there's been negative headline about some negative population growth, some people leaving the market. What we like to do, though, every year is survey millennials and ask them if money were no object, where would they want to live in the U.S.? 
And again, three of the top five responses came in California, concentrated in Southern California, led by San Diego. There's still this desire to live in Southern California, but I think the problem is, and the challenge is going to be, it's going to be hard, if not impossible, to build our way out of our affordability challenges. We know that there's going to be a lower homeownership rate, in particular for younger individuals. We know that in this market, people tend to rent longer. But if we think about the sustainability of these areas, we need to rely on and look into what's happening in the broader economy in Southern California for job diversity, what we're seeing with high income jobs. And Alexis will spend some time in her section talking about the economic backdrops of these three areas. And I also think generational transfer of wealth is going to become an, an increasingly important topic of discussion in Southern California in particular over the next decade as a way to be able to help combat some of the affordability challenges. With that, I'd like to introduce Alexis Wilmot, Zonda's Senior Manager of Advisory and Southern California expert to take the discussion further. Alexis has been involved in the home building industry for over 20 years with a multinational builder, an affordable housing builder, and with Zonda for the past 10 years. Alexis is well-traveled and as you will soon hear, has roots in South Africa but she particularly loves camping with her two young daughters. So Alexis, let me hand it off to you. And Good you morning. are muted. Thank you. There you go. Good morning and thank you, Ali, for your insights into where we are headed in the third quarter. It is our pleasure to present the latest for sale residential trends for Southern California. We will be taking a look at the four main regions, starting with San Diego in the south, Orange County, the Los Angeles area, and finally, the Inland Empire, which encompasses both Riverside and San ben Bernardino counties as one market. Where possible, we will make reference to Orange County and Los Angeles County separately, but some of our data is restricted to present trends on the LA, Long Beach, Anaheim Metro Statistical Area, or MSA as a whole. We will kick off with a summary of local economic drivers and a brief employment forecast. Our agenda takes the pulse of current local resale trends and housing health with a focus on the effects of mortgage interest rates. Then we will take a deeper dive into new home trends with an analysis of supply and demand, price, pace, buyer preference, and comparative builder performance in each of the four regions we are covering. We will pivot off our findings on builder performance to identify best selling communities in Southern California and to provide insight into how the new home industry is managing interest rate fluctuations. The San Diego economy is based on four major cornerstones, including international trade, manufacturing, military, and tourism. And it is therefore no surprise that this economy is focused on national security industries by employers such as General Atomics and Cubic. San Diego continues to retain its reputation as a top biotech hub in the country with breakthrough technology companies and healthcare research organizations. As America's finest city, it enjoys a strong tourism industry. These economic cornerstones serve to support a healthy housing market, which we will look at in more detail. The Orange County and Los Angeles economies share many commonalities. They are both founded on finance, entertainment, health services, and tourism as an economic base. Major employers include the Walt Disney Company, Live Nation Entertainment, aerospace giants such as Boeing and North of Grumman, Edwards Life Sciences, and Kaiser Permanente. This diversity sets the region apart as an international economic powerhouse. The combined Riverside and San Bernardino counties are also attracting aerospace engineering and healthcare. This region has seen incredible growth in logistics and trade infrastructure, making it the distribution hub for Southern California 
which benefits from a military reserve presence at March Air Force Base. The Riverside San Bernardino economy is a growing one, with 1.2% 1 growth in 2023 and forecast to, to log another 1.5% this year, which is comparable with the national average. By contrast, San Diego, which had a good year at 1.4% in 2023, looks set to see a decline in job growth this year. While the Los Angeles Anaheim area is expected to see double last year's growth, this forecast is still below the national average. All three local regions are forecast to see a dip in growth again in 2025. However, Southern California job growth is predicted to be more resilient than the national average in 2025. Unemployment in San Diego County is lower than Los Angeles and Orange County and the Riverside San Bernardino area. 2024 is expected to see an increase in unemployment by roughly half a percent in San Diego and the Inland Empire, while 2025 is anticipated to see an improvement in San Diego and the LA Orange County metro area. By contrast, Riverside San Bernardino is forecast to hover at the higher 5% unemployment rate through 2025, which is above the national average. Growth in high wage positions in particular is a positive benchmark for the introduction of new homes to a market. High wage jobs are growing fastest in the Inland Empire and are declining at a rate of 2.5% in San Diego and by 1.4% in the LA Orange County metro area. Now that we have set the stage for the economics in each of these four regions, let's take a closer look at the resale housing market. Days on market is a strong indication of the health of a resale market, and we can see that days on market has declined over the past year in all four areas. The Inland Empire is currently at 41 days, which is below their historical average, while Los Angeles is operating at their historical average of 38 days. Orange County has seen a sharp dip in days on market, currently at just over one month. San Diego has historically set itself apart from areas to the north with a very tight resale market. Days on market for this geographically constrained county remains well be below the other areas at just 17 days. The interest rate hikes in the wake of the pandemic dragged all Southern California markets below asking price. Recent resale price trends by region show that undersupply and easing mortgage rates over the winter of 2023 fueled resale prices across the board. This metric is one to watch as the San Diego resale market could already be reacting to the slight interest rate uptick since quarter one of this year. Months of supply in Orange and LA counties appears flat at the moment, whereas supply appears to be notching back up in San Diego and the Inland Empire. This could be resale market reaction to an uptick in interest rates, where homeowners are choosing to stay put and wait out more favorable lending conditions. The good news is that all four regions still have very low rolling average months of supply. Median average resale price is on the rise in all four markets after dipping in the summer of 2023. The Inland Empire resale market appears to be the slowest to respond, likely impacted by new home supply, which is far more scarce in the other three regions. As we move on to new for sale home trends, we see that all of Southern California is very undersupplied relative to other metros nationwide. According to Zonda's new home lot supply index, which compares metro areas across the country, the four Southern California regions land in the five lowest MSAs in terms of lot supply. Vacant developed lot or VDL months of supply has dropped again after heading upwards in the summer of 2022 in reaction to interest rates. 20 months of supply is considered the industry norm, and even Inland Empire's historically normal 20 month supply is declining and is currently at just over 10 months. 
Orange County and the Inland Empire show no or very little growth in vacant developed lot levels at all price points. By contrast, San Diego shows an uptick in vacant developed lot in inventory for homes in the 650 to 800,000 price range. LA too shows an increase in VDL inventory at the next price bracket of homes priced between 800,000 and a million. Finished vacant months of supply is very low in Orange County and the Riverside San Bernardino regions. However, San Diego finished vacant inventory appears to be on the rise, as is LA County, which has been head and shoulders above the other three regions since 2018. Los Angeles home builders and those in San Diego to a lesser extent are addressing low inventory with quick move-in or QMI sales strategy, resulting in rising finished vacant inventory. San Diego's vacant developed lot or VDL inventory is currently very low compared to the five-year average of roughly 2,000 units. Months of supply is also below the 7.4 five-year average, while starts are on the rise. San Diego has worked through roughly 88% of its VDL inventory since 2008, with just 6.6 .6 months of supply currently. This market has been supply constrained for the last five years. Orange County VDL inventory continues to decline well below historical levels. Months of supply is following suit at 5.6 months, a level last seen just before the Great Recession. Orange County has worked through roughly 83% of its peak VDL inventory since 2017. That translates to a remarkable absorption of 837 units on average per year in a county of less than 1.1 million households. Like Orange County, Los Angeles County vacant developed lot inventory has declined over the past three quarters, while starts are on the rise, with a dramatic spike over the last quarter. Builders are offering more quick move-in in, move in inventory with features already baked in and less focus on selling additional revenues such as options, upgrades, and lot premiums. This strategy hedges against suddenly high interest rates. Quarter one of 2024 starts doubled vacant lot developed, developed lot inventory. As we will see later in this discussion, most of the demand is coming from the northern end of the county. Like Orange County, Los Angeles, Los County VDL months of supply is at its lowest point of 5.5 months since the Great Recession in 2007. Again, this implies high demand and tight supply for new homes and highlights the continued struggle by home builders to put these homes on the map in the face of regulatory entitlement hurdles. The Inland Empire, which typically has higher vacant developed lot supply, is currently well below the 20-year average of about 16,000 units. Months of supply is declining back to recessionary levels last seen in 2006. And starts are on the rise. Inland Empire matched starts, starts matched vacant developed lots during the white hot pandemic period. Starts are again matching BDL levels currently after interest rates in the winter of 2023 queued a similar dip in months of supply. The region now has the lowest VDL months of supply since the Great Recession. While vacant developed lot inventory continues to tighten, an important benchmark to track going forward is lots under development, which are forecast to trend upwards in the next two years. San Diego starts are anticipated to grow by 11% and Los Angeles County by over 25% in 2024. Riverside and San Bernardino is anticipated to sustain growth at between 5 to 10% between now and 2026, while Orange County is forecast to have a couple of quiet years before a 7% ramp up in starts in 2026. 
We are now going to turn our attention to new market conditions, new home market conditions in Southern California. The San Diego MSA supports almost 1.2 million households and currently offers just 56 active communities, well below the historical average of 95. What is significant is that a greater number of attached products than detached communities were offered for sale over the past year. This speaks to the lack of affordability in San Diego, where home buyers are opting for an attached home because they are priced out of a detached one. Orange County is even more severely undersupplied with just 42 active projects serving a county that accommodates almost 1.1 million households. The historical average number of active projects is 108, while June 2024 logs the lowest number of active communities in history. Los Angeles County supply of active projects has grown slightly over the past 18 months and currently offers 96 communities. On the face of it, this seems to be a better supply than San Diego and Orange counties. However, when one considers its 3.42 million households, Los Angeles County is clearly extremely undersupplied, both today and historically. Riverside San Bernardino has historically been the behemoth in new home supply in Southern California. The region currently offers 244 actively selling new communities, which is consistent with the historical average. It should be noted that the Inland Empire continues to offer a rising share of attached units in response to demand from households who are priced out of detached homes. The impact of mortgage interest rates on buying power and therefore sales pace is clearly shown with a sharp separation between those two metrics in the spring of 2022. Average new home sales pace across all areas is dampened when interest rate hikes occur. San Diego and Inland Empire sales pace are consistently higher than Orange County, and this could be attributed in part to more generous incentive programs being offered by the builders in these areas. Los Angeles County sales pace has always ragged, lagged at three units or less per month. It comes as no surprise that the recurring theme in this discussion is a lack of land supply and lack of affordability. So we ask ourselves, where is the demand pull? What are buyers prepared to commit to in today's market of expensive cost of living and high interest rates? San Diego's households that seek a detached home lifestyle are opting for smaller homes. However, luxury, luxury larger 3,000 square foot plus homes still have an appeal to affluent buyer profiles, but at the cost of sales pace. Sales pace is driven by price and the luxury detached cohort tends to move more slowly. San Diego currently has no appetite for attached units over 2,000 square feet. Orange County sales pace is very elastic with relatively inexpensive homes selling significantly faster at up to five units per month on average versus 3,500 square foot plus homes, which typically sell at less than one half unit per month on average. Orange County detached buyers differ from San Diego in that they tend to prefer a larger home. And this can be attributed to the predominantly Asian buyer profile, which typically is an extended family. Small attached units are widely accepted in both Orange County and LA, likely catering to singles and couples trying to get their foot in the door. Unlike San Diego, both of these markets also show demand for attached units larger than 2,000 square feet. The Los Angeles market shows strong bifurcation between those seeking affordability on the one hand and the very affluent cohort who can afford a luxury 3,000 square foot home. Sales pace for these larger homes is consistently between one and a half and two units per month but approaches four units a month for the 2,000 to 2,500 square foot home size. The most prevalent new home sales by average unit size in San Diego, Orange and LA County 
is 1,500 to 2,000 square feet. The Riverside San Bernardino market shows a preference for larger average home size of between 2,000 to 2,500 square feet. Households are spending the same amount for a smaller home than they did a couple of years ago. Sales pace appears to be somewhat inelastic with homes of all sizes generally selling at three units per month. The exception is the 2,500 to, to 3,000 square foot single family home, which tends to move more slowly at less than two units per month. This can be attributed to some bifurcation in the detached buyer profile, where households either seek affordability or estate lot luxury, but product in between those two bookends is less desirable. An analysis of new home sales by size over the past 10 years throughout Southern California shows that there are indeed buying decision shifts in motion at present. Yes, home sizes ranging from 1,500 to 2,500 square feet remain the most popular, but we see a successive decrease in market share of larger homes since 2016. Between 2018 and 2021, we also saw more buyers getting into homes under 1,500 square feet. A look specifically at detached home sales so it shows a resurgence in 2021 of the 2,500 to 3,000 square foot homes. And this was to meet the demand from reintegrating families during the pandemic. Market share of that new home cohort promptly declined again between 2022 and 2023. As we focus in on attached product, we see another interesting home buyer trend, which we alluded to earlier in the presentation. Attached product is finally becoming more widely accepted in all corners of the Inland Empire, which is always the last of the four regions to accept denser product based on lower land basis and the ability for home builders to make conventional lot deals pencil. Attached product sales are alive and well in the Palm Desert market, and are also prevalent in the rapidly developing areas of Eastvale, Ontario, Fontana, and Rancho Cucamonga. In Southern California overall, we can see an uptick in demand for attached units between 1,500 and 2,000 square feet with higher bedroom count to comfortably accommodate a family. For sale townhome communities report that buyers are no longer predominantly starter families and couples and are attracting an increasing share of move-up families priced out of detached homes. Finally, today, we will round off our discussion with the best performing projects by county. This is one of our favorite topics because it focuses on the successes and innovations of our local builders and serves up lessons learned. The top builders in each county are analyzed by number of communities, average sales pace, and we also measure the change in average list price over the past three to six months to achieve that pace. Toll Brothers earns the top spot for average price in San Diego, while Lennar has the highest average pace. D.R. Horton is the top performer in terms of sales pace in the Inland Empire, while Beza Homes at number 10 is the highest priced. Lennar dominates market share with over 40% in San Diego County, and they have the highest portion of the Inland Empire market too. KB Home and DR Horton are very active in the Inland Empire, and TriPoint is prominent in both markets. As in San Diego, Lennar dominates Orange County with a third of the market share, whereas Los Angeles is a more diverse portfolio of builders. The new home company is the top performer in terms of average sales price at over 3.9 million with an average pace of seven homes per month in Orange County, while in Intercorp has the highest pace at nine units per month. Toll Brothers has the highest average price in Los Angeles and their Metro Heights development in Montebello is a large contributor to this. DR Horton achieves the highest sales pace, but also the lowest average price in LA County. Sales pace 
in San Diego County is above five units per month at several different price points. Six of the top 15 performers have an average price of over 1 million. Lenar's trails at Carmel Mountain Ranch in San Diego entails seven products, five of which are in the top 15 performers relative to San Diego County's 46 active communities. Lenar is also experience, experiencing success in Ot on the outskirts of Otay Ranch in Chula Vista at their Sunbow community. Their age-restricted Junipers project across the road from Carmel Mountain Ranch offers a gated community with curated master-planned amenities. Purpose-built age-restricted communities in San Diego County are few and far between and should be a lucrative future development opportunity if the land can be secured. Several of those top 15 performers achieved a sales pace in excess of five units by sacrificing list price. Roughly half of these communities dropped average list price by about 5% over the past six months. The interest rate creep since the beginning of the year surely factors into the sales strategy. The other interesting thing to note is that in San Diego County, just 13% of all for sale plans experienced positive price appreciation over the, six, over the last six months, while over 50% showed some measure of, dec of decrease. San Diego top sales are concentrated in Central County, and Chula Vista. Note the inverse relationship between monthly sales pace and quick move in home availability. Communities with elevated mon monthly sales or scarce supply, such as the coastal belt, do not need to resort to quick move in homes, which typically infer a home buyer discount. The use of Q QMI is on the decline in San Diego County. However, QMI inventory is still up year over year. North County San Diego, denoted by the hot pink price change indicators, is an area where demand is spurred by lack of inventory and tight competitive submarkets. By contrast, East County and Otay Mesa lure entry level buyers with relative value, deeper buyer in incentives, and a no frills QMI sales strategy where necessary. A quick analysis of specific best sellers focuses on the trails at Carmel Mountain Ranch, which offers seven products, ranging from lower density townhomes at two stories, three story single family detached small lots, and then higher density products in townhome format of various variations. Lenar Sunbow community in Chula Vista boasts very similar product to that at the trails at Carmel Mountain Ranch. Top selling communities in Orange County are concentrated in Central County, in other words, the Irvine area, and also in the South, in Rancho Mission Viejo. Several of the Rancho Mission Viejo communities are successful sellers at roughly six homes per month. Four of them are mentioned here. The three highlighted in purple sold out recently in the last couple of months. The top sales pace is all concentrated in the Great Parks and Portola Springs communities, and as previously mentioned, also in the Rancho Mission Viejo master plan. School scores are a very important component, especially for Orange County home buyers, which as we mentioned before, are predominantly Asian. Relatively strong assigned public school ranking sets sales pace in these desirable areas apart from the likes of Santa Ana, Orange, and Anaheim's subpar school scores. Note the relatively high proportion of active communities that achieved a sales pace in excess of five units per month at, over the last six months. With these strong absorption metrics, QMI st sales strategy is the exception rather than the rule at for sale communities in Orange County. It is most prevalent in those higher density urban areas with lower school scores. Sky at Rise in Solis Park in Irvine exemplifies the thoughtfully curated master planned amenities which are characteristic 
of large-scale communities in Orange County. Ravello at Orchard Hills is a top performer in terms of sales pace, but also one of the most expensive communities at an average price of 4.365 million. The Jessup in Tustin and Polaris at Sol Solis Park are two of the highest priced actively selling attached communities, second only to Parkhouse residences in Newport Beach and Avelina at San Juan Capistrano. As previously noted, sales pace is much lower in LA County than the other three regions that we've been looking at today. Just nine projects and 8% share perform at above five units per month. Top performance by sales volume in LA County typically offers either attainable price point or easy access to downtown Los Angeles. Metro Heights in Montebello is a master plan less than 10 miles from downtown and an example of how new development can set new price point records, topping out currently at 3.75 million. Before the inception of Metro Heights, Montebello was a low priced infill opportunity at best. The fastest selling communities in LA County are typically clustered to the north and in the San Gabriel Valley to the east where affordability is key. Avila is an infill townhome community in El Monte, boasting 10 homes sold in just 10 days. Santa Clarita's Valencia master plan continues to sell well, and more luxurious homes being introduced to this area are pushing price point boundaries to new heights. Valencia boasts some of the finest amenities in the county and has successfully attracted a diverse buyer pool with many different product types. Element is selling stacked flats to entry-level buyers at over six homes per month, while Volara is achieving an average price point of 1.73 million for detached homes. While just two of the top selling communities have an average price above 1 million, the same cannot be said for most of the for sale inventory in Los Angeles County. This region offers perhaps the most diversity of all of Southern California with a myriad of products at price points ranging from 500,000 to over 15 million. The effect of, of price on sales pace is clear with anything selling over 2 million also not moving faster than two units per month as shown by the orange section on the chart. So Orange County sets itself apart from the other regions we are discussing today with slower sales pace and a more aggressive quick moving or QMI sales strategy to address low inventory. However, counterbalancing this is a much higher proportion of communities with positive price growth than San Diego or Orange County. 40% of the actively selling projects in this region showed appreciation over the past three to six months. The distribution of these communities is shown geographically with darker purple dots on the initial graph denoting higher price hikes and yellow or green hues depicting discounts. The final region in our discussion is the Riverside San Bernardino area, where we see top sales pace being driven by attainable price points and relatively desirable school rankings. Unlike San Diego and Orange County, where we saw quick move-in activity heightened in areas where sales pace is slow, the same cannot be said for the Inland Empire. Here, the QMI sales strategy appears to be widely used irrespective of sales volume. This sales strategy makes sense in a region with higher inventory and lower price points than the rest of Southern California. The Inland Empire is characterized by a much deeper product pool than the rest of Southern California. Roughly 50 of these communities, which is 17% of total inventory, are performing at an average sales pace of six units or more per month. Furthermore, two thirds of these communities experienced positive sales price appreciation over the last three to six months. Attached product seems to be an area of growing demand. 
Currently, 18 of the top 50 communities by sales pace are duets or townhomes. As we hinted earlier in this presentation, there is an opportunity to develop denser product along the I-15 corridor between San Bernardino and Banning. The cities and CDPs in this area are preparing for the future by amending their general plans to accommodate higher density product in a mixed use environment. So if we are to summarize performance by region, the gray arrows are a flat trend, the blue arrows are a positive indicator, and the pink arrows are a less favorable indicator. San Diego County reduced its QMI homes to under one unit per project. However, quick move-in inventory is still on the rise quarter over quarter and new home sales pace dampened by a half unit over the last quarter. Sales volume also dipped by 4% over the same time period and new home closings are down. The good news is that starts are up by 12% quarter over quarter, which is significant. Orange County shows a flat trend of 1.3 QMI homes per project and a flattening of quick moving inventory in general. Sales place is, is flat at a healthy 3.9 units per month. New home sales volume is down, but closings are up year over year and starts for Orange County are way down. Los Angeles County's trend of 2.2 quick moving homes per project is flat while QMI inventory is still on the rise. New home sales place is flat at two and a half units per month. LA County registered positive growth in both new home sales and new home closings year over year. Starts are down year over year, but appear to be picking back up on a month over month basis. Lastly, the Inland Empire is, perform is performing at a similar flat 2.2 months of QMI. QMI per project, and this region is also showing a rise in quick move in inventory. New home sales pace dipped slightly to four units per month. However, new home sales volume and closings volume is up, and starts activity increased significantly by 11% quarter over quarter. We can conclude that these new home metrics are a mixed bag but collectively provide a cautiously optimistic outlook in the near future. Some of the key takeaways today are that Southern California saw a seasonal improvement this spring. Ali talked earlier about seasonality coming back into our local markets. On the plus side, the undersupply of resale homes bolsters new home production. Mortgage rate increases sap buyer enthusiasm, and as such, appreciation is expected to remain moderate as long as interest rates remain high. Demand is not an issue, but catering to price-sensitive demand is the challenge for Southern California builders. To deliver attainably priced homes to a very undersupplied home buyer market in all four regions means navigating tight land supply and working through some of the toughest regulatory hoops in the country to achieve the entitlements necessary to build these homes. Thank you everyone for attending today and thank you as well to our two sponsors, Sanova and Westwood Insurance Agency. Zonda will post a recording of this presentation within 24 hours.